Water types have some of the coolest shinies, and there's over 30 in Pokemon Platinum. Today, I'm gonna try and catch each and every single shiny water type in the game. The odds of finding a shiny Pokemon in Generation 4 are 1 in 8192, so this is gonna be torture. Wish me luck! It wasn't long till I found myself at Professor Rowan's briefcase and started my first shiny hunt. While this hunt wouldn't be as technically challenging as some of the later ones, this one was easily one of the most grueling. I literally opened this stupid briefcase over 14,200 times. But in the end, it was all worth it as I found myself a shiny Piplup who I called Shell. With the first hunt over and done with, we still have 34 more shiny Pokemon together, so so I'm basically begging you to leave a like on the video if you appreciate the effort I put into this. Alright, let's keep going. There's only two water types available to find before the first gym. The first being our shiny Piplup, and the other, a shiny Bibberel. While Bidoof is found on many routes throughout Sinnoh, we have the highest rate of finding it at 50% on Route 201. So, logically, I wasted no time and got right to work. This time, I got really lucky, because only around 6,600 encounters later, I found myself a shiny Starly. Damn it. And I have a feeling that this won't be the last time this is gonna happen to us. At this point, I decided that I was gonna catch every single shiny Pokemon I find, no matter its type. Make sure to leave a comment down below on how many shiny Pokemon you think I'll have caught by the end of this run. Even though we had a rough start with Starly, we did actually get really lucky here. Because just under 3000 encounters later, I finally encountered the mythical shiny Bidoof. After catching her, I named her Ravioli, My and together head. we made our way to Orberg City to face our first gym leader. Well, not quite yet. We first bullied a bunch of low-level ponies, and it wasn't long before Ravioli started evolving, turning into our second shiny water type. Shell wanted to be a part of the fun too, and it wasn't long till she became a beautiful shiny Primplup. With a team like this, Rourke didn't even know what hit him. And this had me reminiscing of my childhood. Pokemon has always been a massive part of my life. I always used to carry my DS around everywhere I went. But nowadays, it's too much work having to carry a Nintendo Switch around. I mean, my pockets are only so big. And as there never was an equivalent game on mobile, I never found a solution for this. Until now. And that's this video sponsor, Miraibo Go. Miraibo Go is a complete free to play pal like monster catching game which was just released on mobile whether i'm on the bus to school or in line to grab a coffee i'm always glued to my phone and i'm gonna show you why in miraibo go you don't just go around collecting new creatures of which there are literally over 100 but you can also construct awesome bases like these I promise I tried my best. What's super exciting is that just a couple days ago, Miraibo Go launched their Halloween update, which is one of their largest updates to date. And this marks the start of Season 1 called Soul of the Abyss. This introduces new maps to explore, new character skins, and what I'm most excited for, which is their new PvP mode. I mean, the graphics are absolutely beautiful, and with vibrant landscapes like... Wait, I know that guy over there. Check this out. I'm just gonna sneak up real quick, and... It's just a prank, bro. We're still friends, right? He's my friend, guys. I promise. Now, what are you waiting for? Download Miraibo Go using my link in the description, and make sure to invite your friends too. What could possibly go wrong? With my first gym badge acquired, my journey continued on towards Jubilife City, and it was here where I just had to flex on Dawn with my shinies. You only have two shiny Pokémon? That's just embarrassing. Aww. She may not be easily impressed, but that's bound to change later. I quickly made my way through Route 204 and entered the Ravaged Path. And this is where I'd begin my next shiny hunt. And Psyduck was my next target. But as the odds of finding one were only 35%, I was prepared for a long night. I was nearly bang on odds in this cave. Because 7,700 encounters later, I found a shiny Zubat. Not ideal. This had me really frustrated, so after catching the green little bat, I rage quit for the day and continued my hunt the next morning. This time was not as bad though, because around 3,900 encounters later, I finally saw those sought after sparkles and found myself one of the coolest shiny Pokemon out there, a Psyduck. 
together we meandered through meadows and frolicked by flowers with pure joy because of how exciting our next shiny hunts would be. Valley Windworks has a 70% chance of us finding a water type and both of these guys would be really cool additions to the team. So we got started right away. We went over odds here at around 10,500 encounters and that's when we found ourselves a shiny weasel. This guy's only a 25% encounter so although it took a while to find her it was most definitely worth it. I caught her and called her Orzo. While she was a great addition to the party we weren't done here quite yet. The odds of finding a shiny shallows here are 45% and I'll take those odds. I literally spent my whole weekend here but I didn't mind one bit because we actually did find ourselves the shiny slimy sea slug. I put him in a pokeball and called him Fusili. After sending Mars all the way to another galaxy I entered a turn of forest and quickly exited because there was not a single water type there to be found. I then entered Gardenia's grass type gym and while her team was super effective against mine, everybody knows that shinies are way more powerful than their regular counterparts. Yep, she swept the floor with me. I knew my team needed some work, so after training with the toughest beast that Sinnoh has to offer, Orzo started evolving, turning into a shiny floatzel. Now that's more like it. Not even close. With the second gym badge under my belt, I felt really good about our progress and was excited for the future of this run. But that's when I bumped into Dawn on Route 207. Hey Dawn, I already have 7 shiny water types. Are you impressed yet? Only 7? Isn't there like 30 more to go? Not impressed. She was right, there was still a lot to do. This was not the time to slow down. After making a quick pit stop in Heart Home City, I secured our 4th gym badge with ease. It was already night by the time I made it out of there, but as a dedicated gamer, I kept on pushing and was rewarded shortly after, as Fusili evolved into a beautiful shiny Gastrodon. Now, it actually wasn't a coincidence that I was up this late at night. See, the next shiny up on my list was a Meryl, but on a route like this with 6 possible encounters, the odds of finding one is just 25%, but that's during the day. During the night, the rate of finding each encounter changes, and lucky for us, the odds of finding a shiny Meryl nearly doubles, going all the way up to 45%. And with that said and done, I started my next marathon. This hunt was super painful. I spent the next 17,300 encounters in this claustrophobically tiny patch of grass. And although we went over odds by nearly 10,000 encounters, I did get super lucky with the Pokemon I found, as just look at how cute he looks in battle. And not long after that, he evolved, turning into this gleaming golden Azumarill. This was actually a big milestone for us, because that marks our 10th shiny water type. I made my way to Veilstone City on the next day, and while my eyes were set on Maylene's gym, I had a surprise encounter with Don. Please don't bully me, I'm trying my best. 10 shinies, huh? Not bad. Wait, really? For a nerd? What's her problem? I was feeling too shy to go and take on Maylene after Dawn embarrassed me like that, so I just ran away and found myself at Route 209. But this was no coincidence, because after a quick chat with the local fisherman, he handed me a good rod. And while I wouldn't put it to use quite yet, it would definitely come in handy later. I then took a stroll by Route 213, and as it's an ocean route, I'm sure it won't be a surprise to anybody that our next shiny hunt was about to commence. The Pokemon available on this route are basically only water types. The only problem is, I've already caught most of them. The only new find here was a Wingle, and we only have a 20% chance of encountering it. But as we've been super lucky so far, I decided to try my luck and started the next mission. It took around 5,100 encounters until I found a shiny Shellos. Well, I saw that one coming. Well, while it technically isn't a new find, it's a different version of Shellos, so we'll kinda count it. This hunt wasn't enough to satisfy my shiny hunger though, so I put my good rod to use and spent the next way too many hours of my life in the ocean. And while the available encounters were both pretty cool, I'd be happy with either one. And I was eventually blessed with a shiny Remoraid, who I caught and called Bucatini. With this awesome new addition to the team, I felt ready to collect our fourth gym badge. And it was a walk in the park. It only took me about 32 tries to beat. 
After helping Don's ungrateful butt destroy these galactic grunts, I had a lot of cool upgrades to my team. Linguini was our first evolution, turning into a shiny Golduck. Next up was Bucatini, whose shiny I'm not a big fan of. Our clone Shellos is next on the roster. And last but not least, Shell evolved into a shiny Empoleon. And what a team we've collected so far. Together, we stormed Pastoria City, but we weren't gonna take on the gym quite yet. Route 212 is pretty special for us, because in this pond right here, I have a 100% chance of finding our next shiny water teammate. I started my fishathon, and a couple thousand encounters later, we ended up finding shiny number 15, which was this shiny Magikarp, who I caught and called Detalini. This was actually pretty unlucky for us, because Magikarps have a 100% encounter rate when using the old rod. But we've got pretty lucky so far, so I have no room to complain. And I would most definitely be taking advantage of it, as it evolved into this shiny red Gyarados. And our first task together? Well, that was kicking Crasher Wake's butt. After chasing this galactic grunt halfway across Sinnoh, I bumped into Cynthia, who gave me a little hint, which was that there may be shiny water types lurking around Celestic Town. And while I ravaged through the whole village, there was nothing to be seen. I figured Cynthia wouldn't go and lie to me, now would she? So I set up camp at this little pond, and the fishathon continued. But this hunt was an absolute disaster. I literally kept reeling in my rod way too early or way too late. And although this hunt only took me around 8,000 encounters, it took an ungodly amount of hours. But hey, we eventually pulled ourselves a shiny goldeen. So we'll definitely take it. One more water type added to the party. And after evolving her into a shiny seeking, we actually reached a big milestone because she was our 18th shiny water type, meaning we're already halfway there. More like only just halfway there. But hey, we're making some good progress, so let's keep it up. I was excited to fill up my shiny decks a little more, so I once again cast my bait into a nearby river and started searching. This hunt once again pushed me to my limits. It literally took me around 15,600 encounters, but it all paid off as I found myself a shiny... Magikarp. Are you f serious? I am never fishing again. Well, that's not really possible, because of a certain stupid fish I'd need to catch later on, but we'd at least take a little breather from it for now. I did not want to be let down again, so I made sure to guarantee my next shiny encounter by making my way to Route 218 and started my search for a shiny tentacle. And with odds like these, I felt good enough, and so I went for it. It actually only took me a shocking 1,600 encounters to find this guy, and I called her Macaroni. I then absolutely demolished my rival, just like always, and after this, I was super pumped about my luck and was hungry for more. I took the very next ferry out to Iron Island and started the actual claustrophobic shiny hunt. Ignore whatever I mentioned earlier, this one was the real deal. With encounters like this available, hunting here was an absolute necessity though. And so it began. I felt like my fingers nearly got carpal tunnel syndrome from smashing my A and S key for so many hours. But that's not the only tragedy that struck here, because the shiny I ended up finding was a friggin tentacruel. I mean, come on. On. That's a literal 1% encounter, meaning that the odds of me finding that guy was 1 in 819,000. Well, at least I don't need to evolve my tentacle. Sometimes this game really doesn't like me. We were so far in though, so I could not let this discourage me. I found some time the next evening and kept on going. I definitely got a couple steps closer to having arthritis, but slightly different colors on a screen make everything worth it, right? Well, I definitely hope so, because I did eventually find myself this shiny Wingle, who I caught and called Gamelli. And not long after, I evolved it into this shiny Pelipper, unlocking our 22nd shiny water type. Shortly after, I also unlocked our 6th gem badge. I then bumped into Professor Rowan and Don having a secret meeting. Isn't Darkrai just doing so well? He's two thirds of the way there. Yeah, but have you seen his hairline? No wonder he always wears a cap. 
I'm never gonna catch a break, am I? The seventh gym awaited me next, but before then, I had a couple more shiny hunts to go. And this next one's actually a super emotional one for me. The first wild shiny Pokemon I ever found was over 10 years ago, when I was just 9 years old. And that was a shiny Wooper. At the time, I didn't actually understand what a shiny was, but I knew it meant something. I tried to catch it as best I could, but it just ended up running away from me. Because I found him in the Great Marsh. And now, over a decade later, it was time to get my revenge. The lakes in the Great Marsh have a near guaranteed whooper encounter at 90%. So I started my hunt without hesitation. The only problem was that I was only able to find about 8 whoopers before my time in the safari zone would end. While I did manage to find it under rods at around 6200 encounters, not only did I spend way too much time resetting for it, but each entrance to the Great Marsh also cost 50 bucks. So doing the maths, that's 775 entrances or $38,750 spent. You're telling me I could have literally had a brand new car and all I'm stuck with is this. Isn't he just so cute though? I caught him and called him ZT, and my first order of business was to evolve him into a shiny Quagsire. We only needed to catch one more shiny to unlock a new milestone, so I once again got right to work. I yet again made my way to Route 218, but this time was determined to get over my fear of fishing. There was only one Pokemon on my mind on this route, and that was a Finneon. I fished up around 4,700 aquatic annoyances until I finally hit the jackpot on the Finneon. And with our latest addition to the party, we only have 10 Pokemon left to go. Wait, let's actually make that 9. I still wanted to get one more Pokemon checked off the list before our 7th gem, and that was a Barboach from Route 205. Game Freak was not gonna go easy on me, as I was yet again hit with the curse of the shiny Magikarp. That's like, what, our third one already? Why? This time though, I was not gonna let it phase me, and kept going. Until around 11,800 encounters later, I found this absolute beauty of a shiny Barboach, who I added to the party and called Ruote. I then made my way towards the 7th gym, and while there would most definitely not be any water types up north, there would definitely be some tough foes, and this allowed Ruote to evolve into a shiny Wishcash. Only 7 shinies left to go. And after beating this gym leader, whose name I forget, we earned our 7th gym badge. At this point in the run, I realized that I wouldn't actually be able to find a shiny Manaphy. But not to worry, because the second Shellos we caught earlier totally makes up for it, right? Well, we don't really have much of a choice, so it'll just have to do. But don't worry, I was just about to make up for it. Because after heading back to Heart Home City, and after about 8,000 400 resets, I picked up this cutie little Eevee. And after spending, well, a lot less than $37,500 on a water stone, we found our 29th shiny Pokemon, a shiny Vaporeon. I then handled the, you know, kicking some bad guy butt and casually saving the world, no biggie. But that's when the real challenge begun, because the last five shinies would be an absolute pain in the butt. Firstly, I made my way back to the beginning at Route 204 and picked up a Sea Incense. This is required for me to be able to breed an Azuril, as that's the only way to obtain one in Platinum. Hunting for a shiny egg was realistically gonna suck, but that's when my friend sent me this Japanese Azumarill to help me breed. For those of you who don't know what this means, TLDR, this lets me take advantage of the Masuda method, which basically means that when you breed two Pokemon from different regions, the odds that they're egg is a shiny is now 1 in 1600 and that is gonna make this hunt a little more bearable. Well, it would still not be easy by any means, so I picked up a Magmar from Fuego Ironworks because of its flame buddy ability, which lets me hatch eggs twice as fast, and then started the hunt. Now, don't get me wrong, this was still a super long hunt, which had me hatch over 1100 eggs, but eventually we were able to get the little green grape and check off our 30th 
shiny water type. With only 5 shinies left to go, I decided to get our last gym battle over and done with. And with all 8 gym badges acquired, I decided to take on the most annoying shiny hunt to ever exist in Pokemon, which is the hunt for a shiny Feebas. Now, finding the shiny for this guy isn't even the hardest part. See, there's only one place you can find a Feebas in Pokemon Platinum, and that's in the lake of the deepest floor of Mount Coronet. Now, this lake is 528 tiles large, and of those tiles, only 3 contain a Feebas, and those 3 tiles randomize daily. After finding the correct tiles, this hunt would be a 50% chance of a Feebas, but we first had to locate the tile. I started my very last Fishathon, but was soon discouraged as to how frustrating this was. But just as I was about to call it a day, I found a Feebas calculator online that lets you input your lottery ticket value from Jubilife City and it outputs the only possible tiles where it can be located. And yeah, I found it on my second try. Whoever came up with that, I absolutely love you. And just around 5,300 fishies later, I found myself the shiny Feebas, who I caught without hesitation. And after a couple of tasty puffins, we unlocked our 32nd shiny Pokemon. There's only three more to go. And the next one, well, you may or may not hate me for this, but I caught myself a Clefairy and abused the heck out of the cute charm glitch for this. And if you don't know what that is, just Google it. Okay, but I can explain. There's only one route in Platinum where you can catch a Mantike, and that's Route 223. Oh, so what's the problem, you ask? Well, it's a 10% encounter, meaning the odds of finding one are 1 in 80,000. So yeah, this was very necessary. It only took me a couple of shiny tentacruels before I found myself our last non-legendary shiny water type, a shiny Mantike. And not long after, he turned into our 34th shiny water type, a shiny Mantine. There was honestly way too many side quests to complete before I could begin our last hunt, including the champion and unlocking the national decks. But that's a story for another day, because the only thing we truly care about is a shiny Palkia. We ended this challenge on an absolute banger, as it took me just under 7,000 encounters before finding our 35th and final shiny water type, a shiny Palkia. We actually did it. We caught every single shiny water type in Sinnoh. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to leave a like if you appreciate the effort. That was not a question.